Tokyo. It's where this began. It's where it will end. In the seeker world, everything comes back to Tokyo. Hello, welcome to Questions, a spoilers light lore series for Secret World Legends. In this series, I seek not the right answers, but to merely ask the right questions. Familiarity breeds complacency. And what is more familiar than the flashback to Tokyo? All the bees go through it. It is our baptism by fire, our true induction to the secret world. But how is it that we actually get here? Each faction has their own way of transporting us through time, space, and identity to this moment in Tokyo. Although all do raise their own questions. In the interest of focus, I will look specifically at the Dragon's initiation, because theirs involves characters and events that we will never touch on again. They knock us unconscious, and next thing we know, we're just being dumped in Seoul. The van speeds off in an impossible direction. We're left to wander the streets, but we can't really wander. If we stray too far from a given path, the screen goes static, forcing us back. We follow these butterflies, butterflies that don't appear anywhere else, past empty stalls and, and into the lobby of a hotel, where a man who we ask no questions of gives us answers that make no sense. What is going on here? How much of this is even real? Is it possible that we are simply in a waking dream? We're walking through a haze and not seeing the world as it really is. It's hard to deny the dreamlike atmosphere of everything. The butterflies lead us to a room upstairs where we meet a lovely woman who gives us a uh, really, really good foot massage. So good that it literally blows our mind, setting us through time and space to the body of Sarah in the Tokyo subways. Here the dream clearly becomes a nightmare. While we know these are real events, the same questions remain here. How much of this actually happened as we perceive it? And how much is just a dream? Indeed, it seems to start to fall apart towards the end, with creatures popping in out of nowhere, everything taking on a frantic, uh, confused pace. Eventually, this monster appears, called the Guardian of Dreams. Was this monster actually there at the incident? Or is it just what it says? And whose dreams is it guarding? When we awaken, the woman seems disturbed. Had she experienced it too? Or was she guiding us the whole way? We never find out this woman's name, not even in promotional materials. Who is she? What is she? How is she able to do what she does? And even after we leave, though we can never go back inside, if we go outside we can see her looking out over the city, presumably waiting for her next inductee. Is she a prisoner? Of course, these are just the questions. If you would like the answers, and don't really mind spoilers, then watch Answers this Thursday, where I will discuss the answers to these questions, and explore in some greater detail what they tell us about the secret world. Also, check out my Monday, Wednesday, Friday series, I Ate a Bee, which follows the adventures of my character Debbie Fish through the secret world. As far as I know, I'm the first person to actually call their series a Let's Roleplay. If you like this episode, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do not like this episode, then sucks to your Asmar.